Hello, my name is Mark Erickson. I'm in the Department of Physics at the University of Wisconsin-Madison and in the Wisconsin Quantum Institute, the WQI. If you're listening to this presentation, it's likely because you've been admitted to the PhD program in the Department of Physics. First of all, congratulations. Uh, we hope you choose to come here. I'd like to give you today an overview of quantum science and technology activity in the Department of Physics. I'd like to first mention the Wisconsin Quantum Institute. Uh, its website is on the lower right, wqi.wisc.edu. The WQI is broader than the Department of Physics. It has membership from across the university, although the Department of Physics plays a very large role in it. Please check out that website. Uh, you'll see some activity that I don't have time to mention today. I'll be focusing here on a subset of the activity, which is in the Department of Physics itself. And specifically, I'm gonna focus on seven people, uh, three theorists who I'll start with and four experimentalists who I'll finish with. All of these people uh, have openings for PhD students in the coming year. There are openings besides these as well. So please be free, feel free to contact anyone on this list. And in fact, anyone across the university uh, in the WQI. So I'd like to start with the research activities of Professor Bob Joint. Uh, Bob is a condensed matter theorist. He works on uh, quantum algorithms, on various quantum computing implementations. He has done a lot of work on both algorithms uh, and on noise in quantum computers. Very recently, Bob has come up with a new materials design for quantum dot qubits. This is a materials project that involves silicon and germanium and specifically controlling some of the microscopic states by controlling the variation in composition between silicon and germanium inside the structure. Bob is also director of the MSPQC program. So feel free to get in touch with Bob um, on any of these topics and he has openings for students in the coming year. I'd like to transition now to Mark Friesen who is also working on uh, silicon and germanium based qubits uh, Mark and Bob collaborate closely, and in fact, I collaborate closely with both of them. Mark has a number of current projects, including topological qubits, um, a lot of device simulations, spins coupled to photons, and again, the material science of silicon and germanium, and theories of decoherence. In the center at the bottom here, you see an example of a new type of qubit, a quadrupole qubit, which uh, Mark invented along with collaborators and was published in Nature Communications just a few years ago. On the right-hand side here, you see a simulation that Mark and collaborators did of a device that's actually being measured in my laboratory right now. So as I hope these first two examples show you, there's a lot of interaction, a lot of collaboration in the quantum science and technology activity here at Wisconsin. That collaboration extends, of course, to Alex Lubchenko, the next person on our list. Alex lists four projects on this slide. Uh, the one on the upper left is known as Coulomb Drag. This is a very interesting phenomenon that results in a voltage in one circuit due to activity in a neighboring circuit. That of course happens classically. Here it's happening between these two circuits because of Coulomb scattering, hence the name Coulomb drag. And it's a really very interesting phenomenon. Alex is also interested in the physics of the Dirac point in certain materials, in superconducting and topological effects, especially the proximity effect of materials and the anomalous Hall and spin Hall effects. So as you can see, these, these projects are all focused on uh, condensed matter physics, uh, and that's Alex's particular area of speci specialty. So feel free to get in touch with Alex if your interests align with these projects. He has opportunities for new students. I'd like to switch gears now and start talking about experiment. Here at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, uh, we have four different physical implementations of quantum information in four different laboratories, again, with a lot of interaction between these labs. I'm going to start with Professor Shimon Kolkowitz. On the left-hand side here, you see one of his projects, which has to do with a strontium atomic clock. This is a very exciting experiment in which Shimon's lab has two atomic clocks inside the same vacuum chamber. And one aspect of this project is to measure the gravitational effects as you shift these clocks relative to each other by very small distances. It's an extremely exciting project, uh, just getting off the ground with opportunities for new students and already uh, very well developed. On the right-hand side here, you see Shimon's interest in NV centers. Here, NV centers, of course, uh, make great qubits on their own. 
And Shimon is interested in that aspect, but also interested in using these qubits as sensors in order to better understand and optimize the quantum materials and the noise properties of other materials nearby. And so this is sort of a quantum on quantum experiment, if you will. And in Shimon's lab, uh, there are opportunities for graduate students on both of these projects. Sticking with the theme of AMO physics, Professor Mark Safman's lab is working on four different projects associated um, with neutral atoms uh, and the qubits that you can form from neutral atoms. In the top project here, in collaboration with Professors Walker and Yuvuz, Mark is looking at atomic ensembles of rubidium atoms using Rydberg blockade in order to perform two qubit gates. The second project on this list involves holmium atoms, which are particularly interesting because they have a very large number of internal states, which can be manipulated coherently. Mark's group is also working with Robert McDermott's group on an atom superconductor quantum interface. And the idea here is to transition quantum information from a system that doesn't couple particularly well to optical light superconducting qubits which are excellent qubits and coupled to microwaves, but not so well to optical photons, to another system, neutral atoms, which couple very strongly to optical light. And one can then envision a coupling between superconducting qubits at very long distances. Then finally, at the bottom here, Mark is working with a number of collaborators on an atomic qubit array and on quantum networking, in this case, working with cesium and rubidium atoms. So there are PhD positions on many of these projects, and if these things interest you, you should definitely get in touch with Mark Safman. I just mentioned Robert McDermott's name. Robert is an expert on superconducting qubits. He's interested in their scalable measurement and control and has a lot of recent results in that area. And some of these results as shown on the lower left have to do with digital control, where Robert's group is using superconducting circuits to create impulses, which can then drive other superconducting elements, the qubits, in a way that is fully integrated and offers a lot of promise for scalable control. Robert is also interested in fundamental limits to coherence and especially in correlated errors. He is interested in the origin of these errors. He's got a new result on the archive posted just a very short time ago. And he's also interested, of course, in how to mitigate those errors. And that's work that's gonna be ongoing going forward. So in all of these areas, there are new opportunities and please get in touch with Professor Robert McDermott if these things are of interest to you. Finally, uh, in my lab, we're interested in semiconductor qubits. We have close collaboration uh, with Robert McDermott's group, with Shimon Kolkowitz's group. I already mentioned the collaborations on the theory side. On the upper left here, you see an article that I co-authored with a collaborator at TU Delft, Levin van der Seypen. Um, and you can take a look at that in Physics Today um, if you'd like a, a quick overview of this work. Let me say a few words about it here. Uh, what we do is we design and nanofabricate quantum dot qubits in silicon and in germanium. We're interested in understanding the physics of spins and semiconductors, developing methods for their coherent control and entanglement generation. Um, and just very broadly in the materials, the quantum control and the coherence of these systems. So in, the, in my laboratory, uh, together with uh, collaborator, Susan Coppersmith, uh, we demonstrated a new type of qubit uh, that Sue invented with collaborators. Uh, it's called the quantum dot hybrid qubit. So that was published just a few years ago and it's an ongoing focus in my lab. We're also collaborating with Sandia National Labs on the integration of classical and quantum circuitry. And we have a collaboration with NIST with Justina Zwalek and Jake Taylor on machine learning for automated tuning. And on the lower left of this diagram, you see um, one small part of my lab and some students looking at a cryostat there. We also have opportunities for new students in many of these areas uh, this coming fall or even this coming summer. And please feel free to get in touch with me if this is of interest. And so with that, I'll close. Uh, there's a wide amount of activity. Uh, in many different areas, you can feel free to contact all of the people at the bottom of this slide and more generally anyone uh, listed on the WQI website. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, we'd all be happy to explain things in more detail if you'd like to get in touch with us individually. And we hope you decide to join us at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Thank you very much.